There were several intrinsic qualities of the system that we wanted to characterize. The first of those was field of view of the system. So in order to quantify the field of view in either dimension, we used a yardstick and the computer image capture uh, software in order to put the yardstick at the edge of the field of view and with a known distance separation from the camera we were able to calculate f of v in both horizontal and vertical direction. In order to measure CCD dimensions we removed the lens from the system and used a microscope with a low numerical aperture objective to scan across each dimension of the CCD and obtain the dimensions. We're using a pinhole model for our camera, and it's important because we're um, taking light or rays from our, our object and then passing it through the pinhole and then getting um, a projected image on our image plane. And then we're um, using X sub C, Y sub C, and Z sub C as our reference frame, and then imaging that to our image coordinates, X sub I, and so on. And we're relating that through um, similar triangles since our F is fixed in order to use that for the system calibration on the MATLAB. Using the equations from the pinhole model, we are able to relate that to the camera in reality. While Cartesian coordinates can be used to make 2D measurements, homogeneous coordinates or projective coordinates can be used to make 3D measurements with a 2D image. Homogeneous coordinates require four terms to describe the 3D space in order to ensure that a given point on the image corresponds to a single point in 3D space. We can use the camera intrinsic and the camera extrinsic matrices in order to use this projective geometry. Before any 3D measurements can be taken with the homogeneous coordinates, the distortion in the camera system needs to be taken into account. If distortion is ignored, 3D measurements will not produce accurate re results. We can quantify the distortion for an arbitrary object point with a normalized field X and Y in image space. We then can model the distortion by using these equations accounting for radial distortion and tangential distortion, where K is our distortion coefficient. So for image processing, we measured the dimension of the checkerboard. So each square in here was 3.8 centimeter, and the whole box was 61 by 61. Here are a few of our examples using the low distortion lens. In MATLAB, the corners of the box were first marked on our checkerboard pattern, after which point distortion was adjusted to ensure the red crosshairs aligned with the intermediate corners in the box. This allowed the program to find the corners more accurately, and after this was done for each image, a set of calibration data was produced for the system. We noticed the calibration was performed much more easily for narrow fields of view, though we still didn't meet our requirement of a 0.1 pixel error, um, instead coming in just a little over 0.2. Requirements were not met for the wider field of view either, coming in around 0.3. We think this error could be attributed to um, characteristics of the image, such as image quality and resolution. So for using this box to measure the angular distortion, uh, we used the MATLAB also. The MTF, or modulation transfer function, characterizes the frequency response of a system. Frequencies beyond cutoff frequency of the system do not get transmitted. It's important to note that the cutoff frequency does not fully characterize an imaging system. As in this diagram, MTF-A has a shorter cutoff frequency than MTF-B. However, MTF-A has a much higher Strel ratio, which is the integral of the MTF. One way to measure the frequency response of a camera system is to use a slant edge diagram. By taking a picture of the diagram, the contrast of the photo can be analyzed with MATLAB to determine the MTF of the system. To get the MTF plot, uh, we discrete the slanted edge target and then measure the amount of distortion by using the MATLAB code. And then from that, that data, we, we could get uh, line spread functions and by normalizing and <laughs> Fourier transforming, we could get the MTF plot. Here's the MTF we obtained with MATLAB. A theoretical diffraction limit is included for reference. We use the MATLAB code for each edge and obtain unique MTFs for each of the five object positions. These are the Strel ratios we calculated for each object position. Notice that the on-axis Strel ratio is the lowest, which was an unexpected result. This could be due to lighting in the room, distortion, or other errors. Thank you.